This is a presentation on suffix trees with an emphasis on linear time construction and applications. An overview of our presentation today is the motivation and some definitions, the linear time construction algorithm with Ukonin's uh, algorithm, and we also will mention some applications of suffix trees. So first, the motivation and definition. Uh, a motivation could be an exact match substring problem. So if we're given a text T of length M, uh, and it takes, let's say we want a linear processing time for that length. Uh, and we're also given some patterns, some unknown strings, S of length N. Uh, one motiv motivating problem could be to find all the occurrences of this pattern uh, S in this text T. We want these searches to be done in linear time. And one important thing to note is this linear time is uh, related to the length of uh, the patterns and, and not of the text M. So it's independent of M. So a more concrete example would be given a grocery list. That could be our text. And our patterns could be like different words of food, like eggs, bread, lettuce, to see if, that, if there's an exact match of these food items in our grocery list. So we want our pre-processing time to be uh, O of M, where M is the length of the text, and we want our search time to be O of N, where N is the length of each pattern or string that we're searching. So something that allows us to solve this problem is a data structure called a suffix tree. We can build a suffix tree uh, for m length strings s. It is a rooted directed tree with exactly m leaves. It's numbered from, and each leaf is numbered from 1 to m. So each leaf has a unique number. Each internal node, uh, we consider an internal node to be a leaf, uh, sorry, we can consider an internal node to be a node that is not the root or a leaf. Each internal node has at least two children. It's a point where the, sp uh, the path splits. Each edge is labeled with non-empty strings. Now each edge label from the node uh, begins with a unique character. And also, for any leaf i, the concatenation of the edge labels spell out that string from i all the way to the end, from index i all the way to index m. So here's an example of a suffix tree uh, for the string xab, xac. So we see that uh, all of the uh, leaves are numbered. There's a leaf numbered one, uh, two, three, all the way up to six. And starting from the root, which is towards the center of the, of the figure, uh, emanating towards the sides is uh, each string that spells out um, XAB, XAC, and all the suffixes are there as the uh, edge labels. The suffix tree, oh, we're going to have a little bit more definitions here. The, we're going to talk about the path label, which is the label from the path from root to node. And that is the concatenation of substrings labeling the edges of the path. And uh, one other thing to mention is the string depth, which is the number of characters in the label for any given node V. So we'll touch on path label one more time. So in the previous example, we can see that the uh, label from root node root to a node is the concatenation of substring labels labeling edges of a path. So from the root to 6 we see xc. Uh, excuse me. From the root to the to, to leaf 6 we see uh, the label the path label c which is starting at index c going to starting at index 6 going to the end we see the character c. Similarly starting at the root and going to leaf one, we see uh, the path label XA, and then continuing from that internal node W, we see BXAC. So from root to W to one, the, the total path label is XABXAC, which coincides with beginning at index one and continuing to the end of the string. So one issue with what we've represented so far is that 
we could have issues where a prefix in the string could possibly be a suffix uh, that also occurs in the string. And so we remedy to this by uh, including in our alphabet a unique character called the termination character. And so from this example, from the example XABXA, this would have been an issue, but since we've in included this uh, termination character, XA at the end would no longer be a, uh, found as a prefix in our suffix tree. Suffix trees can, uh, can do search. We can perform searches on suffix trees. Uh, if we want to search a pattern P, it can give us the number, the suffix tree can give us the number of occurrences of pattern P. Uh, so we would just use something like a depth, depth first search. And we would, if we find a partial match to our pattern with the current edge label, then we would continue and uh, continue down to the subtree. Yeah, here's a small illustration. A suffix tree for AWY, AWX, AWXZ. Uh, and we're searching for the pattern AW. We see that it occurs three times in the string because when we traverse this uh, suffix subtree, we see that once we get to aw, uh, there are three leaves within that subtree. And therefore there are three occurrences because it, uh, three different indices are returned. So the runtime for the search is uh, o of n plus k, and n will usually dominate if the number of occurrences of the pattern is small. So moving on from motivation definitions, we'll now discuss the construction. And we are interested in a linear time construction. So we'll look at Ukunin's algorithm. Uh, so some things, uh, so the overview here is we'll talk first talk about implicit suffix trees. We will then talk about some additional variables that are necessary for this algorithm. We'll talk about what happens when we split a path and insert an internal node. And finally, uh, we will talk about this idea of suffix links, and we'll end with a with an illustration of Ukunin's algorithm. So, implicit suffix trees reverse that idea of having the the uh, termination character. So, we see on the left there is a suffix tree x a b x a with the termination character. And so, what we will do is remove every copy of the terminal symbol. We'll remove every edge with no label. And we'll also remove any node that does not have at least two children as a way to compress some of the paths. So therefore, this implicit suffix tree x, a, b, x, a that we see on the right is uh, what we're going to be looking at more often in this, in this Ukunin's algorithm. So these implicit suffix trees represent intermediate sta uh, states of the tree. Within each step of the algorithm, we're going to be focusing on these implicit suffix trees. And within each step, the suffix tree will be extended one character at a time. So look, uh, again, looking at the left, implicit su suffix, we have an implicit suffix tree for a, x, a, b, x. And then we will extend the suffix tree by one character by adding uh, character b. So, something to consider here is um, the four variables that are necessary. So we, uh, we see um, something called the active point, which is a triple of an active node, active edge, and active length. And then another variable is the remainder. And uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail so first we'll talk about the remainder. So the remainder, we can consider it as the amount of repeated characters that are being uh, added implicitly. So the, the emphasis is on repeated characters. So each time we see a repeated character, we increment remainder for each matched repeated character. And then once we, we go back and deal with those repeated characters, we decrement remainder for each split and internal node that we add to the suffix tree. And once the remainder reaches zero, we move on to the next step. We move on to the, with our algorithm. So
So considering this active point, this triple, the active node, active edge, and active length, the active node is the, con the, con uh, the position where we are currently inserting a suffix. We're inserting this, this uh, character. The active edge is the current edge that we're considering, and the active length is the remainder on the current edge. So as we mentioned earlier, while the remainder is greater than zero, we're going to be splitting the active edge. And we'll see this, uh, we'll see a little bit more details in an illustration. If the active node is the root, we decrement uh, the active length. If the active node is not the root, we will follow a suffix link to the new active node. If there's no suffix link, then we set the active node to root. And we'll discuss uh, suffix link uh, next. So suffix links uh, occur if we have a uh, an instance of where we're splitting an edge and inserting an internal node. If and we do this on an occasion that is not the first occasion. So let's say we've split an edge, insert an internal node. If that's the first time we've done it in this round, then we will not employ a suffix link. If it's not the first time, we will be using suffix links. And the purpose of them is to connect previously inserted nodes and the new node together. And the beauty of the suffix links is it enables uh, us to reset our active point and the remaining inserts will be constant time, which is very important for the, the runtime that we're looking for for the construction of our suffix tree. So putting together our different components of Ukunin's algorithm, we see in order to build a suffix tree, we have to use something called like add a string, like we're adding one character at a time of this whole entire string. So within add string, we will be extending the tree. Inside this extend tree function, uh, while remainder is equal to zero, we will be either, de uh, depending on what the active edge is, we'll either be in, uh, inserting a leaf, that's a very simple case, or if we actually have an active edge, then we will be uh, splitting that active edge, and um, uh, which consists of creating like a new branch and adding that branch. So now we'll look at an illustration of this of Ukunin's algorithm for a linear time uh, suffix tree construction. So given the string a b c a b x a b c d, uh, we can repeat the first few steps from the the um, <clears throat> the idea introduced in the first section about suffix trees. So on the right we see we're kind of up to step four. A, B, and C have all been inserted into the suffix tree. So all the different suffixes starting from index one, A, B, C. Starting from index two, it's B, C. Starting from the last index, it's C. And now we'll move on to the next step, which inserts A again, and A happens to be a repeat. So upon this first repeat, we'll, we're going to update the active edge, we're going to update the active length, and the remainder. So as you can see on the previous slide, the active edge was none, active length and remainder were both zero. And in step five, the active edge is now A, as indicated by that purple line on the graph, that purple edge. The active length is one, and the remainder has also been incremented to one. So now when we're considering the next character B in step six, we'll do a similar update. So the active edge is still the same. However, the active length and remainder have both incremented. So now we will resolve uh, both A and B. So we resolve A first with a, with a split. So in step seven, we split our active edge A to uh, to uh, and insert a new internal node, but also we decrement active length and remainder. And then for the next step, step eight, we will be splitting um, our active edge B. And since this is the second time we are splitting, it's it's greater than the the first time we were splitting. We will be using the suffix length. Uh, suffix link, excuse me, as indicated by the dotted, that dotted line. 
And again, we'll decrement active length and remainder. And since they have reached zero, we will continue on with our algorithm. So skipping ahead to step 10. Uh, similarly to step five, since we have uh, encountered a repeated character, we will update active edge, active length, and remainder. And since we have found a, another repeat, we will move uh, the active node down from zero to four. And then we will repeat as usual what we did before. So we're attempting to split that our, our active node. So once we've encountered C, which is no longer a repeat, we will do that split. So here's the result after we've split, <coughs> excuse me, we've split uh, our active edges and inserted the suffix links. And here is the completed suffix tree for this string. And this was all done in linear time, uh, order m time, where m is the length of that string, that a, b, c, d, a, b, x, a, b, c, d string. The runtime of Ukenin's algorithm is linear. And again, we say that its input size is order m. So importantly, uh, this uh, big O of M bounds the number of nodes that we find in our suffix tree. It bounds the number of nodes in a path since no node can have a greater depth than M. And since the maximum node depth M uh, is M and there are only two M explicit extensions possible, it follows that the maximum number of node skips is bounded by o OM. So the overall construction is uh, big O M. So now we've looked at the motivation, definitions, and construction. We'll end our presentation with a couple of applications. So two applications of suffix trees are plagiarism detection and also data compression. So for plagiarism, plagiarism detection, uh, we can one of the areas is called term occurrence analysis. And we can, it's also identified as a problem called the longest common substring problem. Interestingly enough, uh, Donald Knuth conjectured that uh, a linear time algorithm for a long, uh, longest common substring problem was not possible. But now we know that a linear time algorithm is possible with a generalized suffix tree for two strings, S1 and S2. We can construct the generalized suffix tree uh, by marking each uh, each internal node with um, one or two, or, or both, one and two, when we're constructing our suffix tree over these two strings. And therefore, any, any path that contains both one and two will be the path for our longest common substring. Also in the realm of uh, data compression, uh, the, pop the popular uh, com uh, compression algorithm ziv lempel compression, uh, it's commonly found in Unix systems. It's the basis for the compress utility. It um, employs suffix arrays in its preprocessing. So two important parts of ziv, uh, ZIV lempel compression are the use of a substring called prior and some data about prior is the length of prior which is L and S is the starting position of prior so this SL pair can be found in OL time and therefore OL time and the pre-processing of the suffix array is therefore bounded with OM time which is also linear so in conclusion uh, we've looked at the definition of suffix arrays. We've looked at the linear time construction with Ukunen's algorithm. And we've looked at some very uh, useful applications of suffix arrays. Or suff excuse me, suffix trees. <laughs> Thank you for your time.